My pre-calculus student, this video is for chapter 5.2, unit circle, sine and cosine function. So we are ready to define a function, or to actually two function, sine and cosine function, which is periodic. Periodic means um, it would go up and down. Um, you must have heard sine waves, right? So it's like wave, and then they don't, they never ends. So this function is very strange. It doesn't go up uh, to infinity or I should say, I should not use the, um, I should not use the arrow. The arrow seems to point to it's going up. So it doesn't go up to infinity or go, go flat out like the rational functions, but it would repeat, repeat itself periodically. So the two main one are sine and cosine function. How do I define it? How do I make something so that um, when I plug it in um, periodically, it would repeat itself. So it turns out that we can use a, an angle as our input, and then the sine function is our function. And we define it this way. We define uh, the angle as in standard position, and then in the terminal side, there's a line, right? This is a ray, so it's a lot of uh, points on it. Now, this is not a line because it would just be on one quadrant or you know half of the axis if it falls on the axis so you would pick any point any point x y on the terminal side so this point would uh, have a distance r from the origin and we calculate r is equal to x squared plus y squared why because we can drop a right triangle into it and so the um, this vertical line would be uh, the coordinate of y, this horizontal line <coughs> of the right triangle would be x. So x squared plus y squared is equal to uh, r squared. So r is square root of x squared plus y squared. And we take only the positive number because r uh, is a distance, it's always positive. And then we would define a function as you input this angle, the sine function will give a number y over r, where y is the point and r is how far the point is from the graph, <clears throat> from the origin. Cosine function is x over r. You get the uh, x coordinate, <coughs> x coordinate of the point divided by how far away it is from the, the origin, x over r. So these are the two main ones. It would be periodical. There are four more that we can define. Tangent is y over x. Cosecant is r over y. Secant is r over x. Cotangent is x over y when the denominator is zero. They're a little more complicated because you have to make sure that x and y is not zero because potentially x and y could be, x or y could be zero. But um, sine and cosine are periodic function. So uh, this particular definition is uh, presented in most books, but I think our book talk about it much later, which is um, a little a little strange because we use this to do the unit circle. So I talk about this a little bit. Um, so if if that is the case, so when you uh, to evaluate sine theta or cosine theta, if someone gives you an input and you have to put it in. Um, you actually do not do any calculation. So there's no like y square or you don't add or subtract anything. You don't divide anything. You do divide. You divide two. You use three numbers. You actually look at how this angles is located at the terminal side. You pick any point on it and then you divide it by r. For, for, uh, for cosine, you divide by x over r. For sine, is y over r. So let's uh, practice doing this. So um, uh, there is an angle. When this angle uh, rotates, there is a point on the terminal side, and it's negative 2, comma 3. Negative 2, comma 3 would be here, negative 2, comma 3. So I know the terminal side is here. Now, I don't even know what the angle is, what how many radian it is, I don't know. But if I can get a point of negative 2, comma 3, negative 2 is x, y is 3. I can actually find the uh, function. So let's do the sine function. The long writing is S-I-N-E, but we can short form it as sine. Now it is our practice. So what 
it is our practice not to use a parenthesis. Usually, when we say a function, function x, function of x, we use a parenthesis so, so that we, we don't confuse it with f times x. But when we do sine, we know that it is a function, so we don't do the parenthesis. We will just do sine theta. Sine theta, by definition, is y over r, right? So we'll have to find r first. r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared, negative 2 squared plus 3 squared. So that would be negative 4, that would be 4 <laughs> plus 9, so a square root of 13. So that is 3 over square root of 13. You can rationalize it as 3 root 13 over 13 by multiplying root 13 top and bottom. But that's the answer. So input theta, uh, a theta output 3 root, 3 root 13 over 13. Um, this, this angle is uh, defined by its point on the terminal side. And what is cosine theta? Cosine theta is x, so it be x over r. So negative 2 over 13 times 13 over 13, rationalize it, would be negative 2 root 13 over 13. Uh, tangent theta. Uh, what is tangent theta? Tangent theta is y over x, so it would be 3 over negative 2 or negative 3 over 2. So most of the time, we just do a uh, fraction. What about sine 90? Now, we have the angle now. We have the angle and also tangent pi. So now, because they are, they are particular, they are they terminate on the axis. So we we know what we can pick whatever point that we want. So ninety degree is here, right? So this is our terminal side. I can pick any point I want. Let's say I pick zero comma two. Okay, you cannot pick negative two because the terminal side is always terminal side is just one sided. So and then r would be square root of zero plus square root of 2, so that would be so root 4, that is still 2. So I have, I have x, y, r. What is sine? Sine is sine 90 degree is equal to 2 over 2, right? A y over r, that is equal to 1. So sine 90 is equal to 1. So that's how you do it. You have to, in case uh, you can find a point, you find a point. If you cannot find a point, um, you have to draw it and find a point. What about tangent, tangent pi? Pi is radian, and we draw our terminal sign on here. What is one point that I can pick? Maybe I'll pick um, negative one comma zero, right? Negative one comma zero. So r would be what? Uh, r would be one negative one square plus zero square. That's equal to one. So tangent is, so I don't need, I, actually I don't need r. Tangent is y over x is 0 over negative 1 tangent pi. So that is 0. 0 over something is 0. Um, so be, by this definition, um, we can actually figure out the sign of the function. So we don't know what this sine theta, cosine theta is about, but we can actually tell what the sign is. Um, now, in the first quadrant, both x and y are positive, right? Positive, positive. So if you if you divide y, uh, r is always positive, right? r is positive. So you do divide y over r is positive, cosine is positive, tangent is positive, secant, all of them are positive. In quadrant two, your x, y goes like that, uh, where this is negative and this is positive. So sine is positive because sine is y over r. Cosecant is uh, also positive because cosecant, basically, if you look carefully, cosecant is r over y. So these are reciprocal of each other. So they should have the same sign. And the way I write it is they are actually reciprocal of each other. For cosine is x over r, but secant is r over x. Tangent is y over y over x, cotangent is x over y. So we'll say recipro reciprocal, reciprocal of each other. Um, so a uh, sign will be positive, cosecant is positive, but all the others are negative. Likewise, tangent is positive because x and y are both negative and negative, right? So if you have the negative over negative is positive. Cotangent is the same. And for, 
for this quadrant, x, y would be x is positive, y is negative. So if x is positive, x over r, which is cosine, is positive. So we have these uh, uh, functions that are positive in the four quadrant. And a lot of time, the way we remember it is all s, t, c. So some people do all, all students take calculus or all students take coffee. I don't know. There is thing all smart. I don't know. There is a lot of different ways of remembering this. So all means all functions. S, S means sine function and is reciprocal. T means tangent and is reciprocal or positive. C means cosine is reciprocal is positive. So I will be it it is useful to remember that so that we can figure out what angle uh, a particular given angle is. If I have an angle where its tangent is positive but the cosine is negative, where where is it? Okay. Tangent is positive is this two, right? So we said because tangent is positive or positive. So one of these two. But cosine is negative. So where is cosine? When is cosine negative? Cosine negative is cosine is positive in here. Cosine negative is here, right? Cosine negative, cosine negative. So the only thing that is common to both of them is quadrant three. All positive, tangent positive. That's how that's how you do it. You can do it. In what quadrant is sine is positive, but cosine is negative. So we say sine is this, right? Sine positive or positive. Cosine negative, we talk, we say cosine is positive in here. So cosine negative, cosine negative. So the overlap is this. So that is quadrant two. That means the angle is between 90 degree and 180. So we are ready to, uh, so this is one way to define all the six trig functions. And primarily the two that we are interested in is sine and cosine y over r, x over r. Now we are going to do the second definition, which is use defin uh, unit circle to define trig function. And before we do that, I'm going to do talk about those in the next video. Let's do some prerequisite for from geometry that would help us uh, to make the unit circle definition. Um, the first is circle. So all of a sudden, we would use a circle to define our function. In the first definition, we never use circle. It's just a angle. Uh, you pick a point, and you find r, and you can find all the six trig function. It's, it's rather clumsy. So the second definition, which follows, is using unit circle. So what happened is, we would, uh, you, I don't know if you still remember a formula of a circle. A circle can be plotted by using x squared plus y squared equal to r squared, where r is the radius. So I can show you if I let's erase all this. Use x squared plot x squared plus y squared. If I want a circle of radius five, I do twenty-five. You go to twenty-five, you see that it is a circle with the center at zero zero and the radius is five. If I want to do um, a circle of radius 6, I write equal to 36. You see that it is the same. If I circle, do a circle of radius 1, so what would it be? It would be equal to 1, right? So it would be as the, the radius is 1. So we call this a unit circle because unit, the radius is 1. So this is the 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 prerequisite that we need. The second thing is about special triangle. So we know if I have a 45, 45 triangle, uh, the sides are AA, two side AA, then this, the C side, the half point is A root two, why? Because I would have A square plus A square equal to C square, two A square equal to C square, square with both sides, C equal to root two A, right? And if I have a 30, 60 triangle, so basically, I would uh, um, uh, duplicate it on two sides. So I would have 60, 60, 60. So if one of the side is A, then the two side is 2A, 2A, 2A. So the hypotenuse is 2A, 
and then the um, the sh the the uh, long leg the this side is a root three, so we'll use this to do the 